Hello and welcome to another installment of Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. My name is Jesse Leons and for the next half hour or so, I will be engaging performance-based financing coordinator within the St. Lucia Health System Strengthening Project Implementation Unit. Quite a mouthful, but a pleasure thank nonetheless to, to have him in studio. Good day, Mr. Neam Jabatiste. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I want to start with uh, uh, you providing, for the benefit of our viewers, a definition, a succinct definition of this project, the St. Lucia Health System Strengthening Project, and the brushstroke that is uh, fina performance based financing right. in this masterpiece. Yes. So, uh, the St. Lucia Health Systems uh, Strengthening Project is a project which was uh, um, which which is funded by the world bank but, but there's it's a very very strong collaboration between uh, the world bank and the ministry of health um, what this project aims to do is to strengthen health systems uh, all of the health systems in the country mm -hmm. you would appreciate uh, first of all reach uh, uh, to achieve health uh, is not just to prevent disease there are other systems around um, which other systems around the achievement of, of, of health that, that we also have to ensure that it's working and ensure um, that, that you get a uh, positive outcome from it. So the, 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 the project itself, there are four components. Mm -hmm. The first one uh, is, is to, to design and implement a package of services. The second one um, has to do with, with uh, uh, seeking to, 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 to strengthen the efficiency of that package of service in the implementation. The third one um, has to do with uh, the, the management of the whole project itself. And the fourth one has to do with building St. Lucia's resilience uh, with respect to, to uh, getting um, prepared for disasters and that type of thing. So these are the four main components. The PBF component is part of the second component, which seeks to, to strengthen the efficiency of the health service. And the PBF component focuses more on the, on, on in the primary health care setting and dealing with uh, non-communicable diseases, specifically diabetes and hypertension. Okay. Speak to performance-based financing as a precursor to uh, national health, uh, universal health care and also national health insurance yes. for St. Lucia. So universal health care, there are two main components of universal health care. One is the package of services that, mm -hmm. that, that and, and, and you would recall that I just mentioned that, that part of the project is to design that package of services. And the second component of universal health care is the financing f um, of the implementation of that package of services, and that's where the national health insurance comes in. Um, uh, comes in. So, so you develop a package of services, and then you finance the package of services. And so um, the PDF uh, component is part, of course, obviously, of the development and implementation of the package of services. But what is unique about this PBF is that it's going to encroach or impinge on on all of what that we need to do for uni universal health care. Okay. So it's like a pilot. It's a pilot universal health care, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. So it, it looks at the development of the package of services. And of course, it's this time we're focusing on diabetes and hypertension. Mm -hmm. But you could have other services, other chronic yeah. diseases, based on your analysis and, and what you see. It's looking in terms of efficiencies. It's looking in terms of data collection. It's looking in terms of analysis. It's looking in terms of, of accountability mm -hmm. and governance and all of those other issues that 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 the, that the ministries of health has been grappling with in terms of not only providing universal health care but also in terms of providing a much more efficient uh, service uh, for, for 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 people. Okay, let's get into the essential uh, package of health services. Uh, what is 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 t being taken into consideration for the design of it, and what will it constitute? Clearly, one of the things that have to take come into consideration is what we call the epidemiological profile. So how does it affect the country? What's the burden of disease? How many people get sick? How many people um, 
uh, die from it and so on, how many people are incapacitated from it. Another, of course, would be the cost. We cannot not also include the cost. So, so you would want to, 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 to ensure that, yes, you're delivering these services. It has to be quality services, right, as well. You have to take into consideration the cost. You also have to take into consideration your capacity to implement that. And so uh, you would have to do a lot of reform of your services. A lot of the things that we're doing now in the absence of universal health care, come universal health care, uh, the health sector will have to be a lot more efficient uh, in terms of its data, in terms of its use of data, in terms of how it governs things, in terms of how it procures and how it provides services. Mm -hmm. so, so in a nutshell, that is, that is, what, um, that, that is what universal health care and what the PBF uh, um, uh, uh, program pilot is trying to do. Okay, so for the pilot, you'll be focusing on the two non-communicable diseases, as you mentioned, diabetes and hypertension. Exactly. Getting to what prompted this decision. Okay, so first is the epi epidemiological profile. So diabetes and hypertension has been consistently among the top 10 causes of death in St. Lucia for many years, as I could remember. And um, in addition to that, diabetes, they, they account for about, if you really do, do the analysis, they account for about 75% of the mortality burden in St. Lucia. And so even in the absence of any analysis, we knew for, at the Ministry of Health that diabetes and hypertension has to make that list. And so even if we don't have a finalized list, we know that diabetes and hypertension are going to be on, the, on that list. And then with, the, with the, the advice from the World Bank and, and some of the other experts that work with them, they have decided, well, okay, we're going to be focusing, uh, we're going to uh, focus the pilot on diabetes and hypertension. The pilot is very, very important in terms of introducing us uh, to these reforms, mm -hmm. but also letting us get, so to, um, to so, uh, wet our feet, so to speak, in terms of when we have to come around to do the universal health care. So, so, so these were some of the things that go on. And of course, the, the, we always have the, the issues of the provision of services. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always talking about quality, quality of, uh, quality of services, the coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, how many people are reaching? Are we reaching uh, the, the correct people? So, so uh, that is what we are currently working on, to try to put those reforms in place so that when we begin to implement, we will not, still will not be perfect, but at least we would have taken into consideration some of the existing um, circumstances that we have and then trying to move forward with the assistance of the bank and some of the other experts that's working with us right now. Okay, let's get into some of the activities to be financed under the improvement of service delivery through performance-based financing. Right, okay, so, so, so the first, so there are, there are four main activities, well, well two main activities for, for mm -hmm. so it's screening, definitely screening for diabetes and hypertension and, and treatment for diabetes and hypertension. But we also going to be looking at reforming the uh, or improving the existent the existing data collection. We have to be working with the health management information unit to calibrate uh, whatever systems that they have in place uh, that will enable us to do the, the, the performance based financing. Mm -hmm. We have to also work with some of the quality of care issues um, um, in terms of the delivery and of diabetes and hypertension. So over the, 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 the last couple of months, We've been looking at all of the guidelines, all of the protocols, all of the different uh, uh, strategies that has been used in the Caribbean uh, and, and, and internationally and to see how we could come up with, with, the, with uh, calibrate uh, some of the procedures and, and some of the, the, the guidelines and protocols mm -hmm. that will enable us to begin to implement the performance-based financing. We are talking performance-based financing under the St. Lucia Health System Strengthening Project. Are we going to stick a pin in that, Mr. Jabati? So when mm -hmm. we come back, we get into funding, a critical aspect of yeah, that. Yeah, Stay yeah. with us. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. 
mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is an edition of Issues and Answers on NTN. We're talking about performance-based financing as part of the St. Lucia Health System Strengthening Project. We're speaking to uh, the performance-based financing coordinator, Mr. <laughs> Nahum Jebatiste. <laughs> and we mm -hmm. came off of the break uh, speaking on the essential package of health services for the, the pilot program right. and the focus on diabetes and hypertension. Yes, yes, right. uh, tell us, how will this, this, this package be funded? Okay, so the entire uh, project is is uh, twenty million twenty million U.S. dollars, um, but for the diabetes for the performance so that's based Lucia health system strengthening yeah, strengthening project. project, the entire project is about uh, twenty million, but but for the diabetes and hypertension component, the PBF component is four million uh, U.S. Uh, dollars, and it's over. We so we have about 30, 30 months, uh, so to speak, to to to, to use that money. And to to and to implement uh, performance uh, based financing. Okay, so PBF, uh, put this I into context for us in terms of other countries that would have already implemented this program. Right. So so there are a few countries who have been who uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, that's that I I'm not we 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 don't have much data in terms of, of for the Caribbean region, but but definitely for Latin America. In fact, the external consultants are from Latin America. Um, but the difference between them and ours is that most of their, their PBF uh, approaches has been with uh, maternal and child health. Uh, so this is kind of the first in the few that's going to be looking at chronic diseases and specifically diabetes and hypertension. So again, uh, we see St. Lucia uh, being used as a pilot. Some people like to say guinea pig, but I prefer to say pilot. You know, and, and it's because I think that the, the international um, um, thing the international uh, agencies see something peculiar about St. Lucia. One of the things that's going for us is that we do have a, a health, uh, health information system already in place, and that was coming from another project from the World Bank. Um, and so what, what was done was uh, to, to, to build on what exists. So in terms of the information system, in terms of what's happening uh, even right now in the primary care setting, that's the other thing. It's, it's all going to be happening in the primary care mm -hmm. uh, setting. Uh, and so, so rather than focus, because most of when people talk about health, most people focus on hospitals. But, uh, but in, in the case of the PBF, it's on prevention. So mm -hmm. in other words, if you can get the prevention right, then you can you will have a less burden and a much more comp um, a less complex issues to deal with at the at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So so that is the whole approach. And then if you ever have to uh, achieve universal health care, which if you want to see as the ultimate goal of this uh, PBF, then now uh, what WHO has recommended is that you start in the primary care, and and so so in terms of of all what is recommended. Um, this is the approach that, that, that the, the bank and, and the experts had advised um, the country to take. And so it's, it's, for me, it's very exciting, you know, and, um, because this is the first time that we do have diabetes and hypertensive services. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but but uh, uh, I can say here that we do not really know how, whether or not we're making progress, uh, so mm -hmm. to speak. We, we know, I mean, we can, we can see, um, but we still have a lot of amputations for a lot of amputations. We still have, uh, we don't know, for example, if you take a particular community or a particular population in the country, what is the prevalence of diabetes and hypertension there? So hopefully over the next, when we start to implement this, this will be, this will, this is the information we have on our fingertips. And so we'll be able to plan a lot better, uh, for the, for the strategically for the health of the country. Mm -hmm. um, at least from the perspective of, of diabetes and hypertension. But of course, we could always extend those lessons learned to some of the other things that will be in the package. Okay. I, I want to segue a little bit. The project itself is in full swing. So tell us what uh, are you guys learning in terms of where you started from at the beginning of the project, but now you're beginning to assess right. what's so happening on the ground. Right. So we are not there yet. <laughs> we are not yet in full swing. It mm. has taken us about nine months to, to, to But the to project is fully fledged. Fully fledged. Yes. So, so we're going to be starting. We're going to be actually starting in July. Okay. 
Uh, we are launching in June, so next month we, we're going to be launching and, and, and we are trying to get um, all of the deliverables that we need to have in place for launching right now. Mm -hmm. um, let me just say that, that the support that I've received from the nurses has been tremendous. The support from some of the key staff that's going to be implementing that PBF has been tremendous. And, 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 and even the support from the bank and the external consultants has really been, rem been tremendous. They have given us a lot of flexibility uh, mm -hmm. in defining this. In, uh, although PBF is relatively new, we had to learn about PBF and, and had to uh, be consistent with, 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 with some of the recommendations of the bank. But it's a very important, uh, I think, and a crucial learning process for us. And so hopefully we would be, I would be able to answer your question a lot more in terms <laughs> of the figures, tell you what's the prevalence in this community or in that community. Mm -hmm. And so with that type of information, I believe um, we can have, we can do a lot better for the persons living with diabetes. And more effective execution. A lot more effective execution. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to reducing the number of amputees. You know, a lot of, um, we're going to be have, we'll have, a, a, if you want, a, a frame for doing a lot more research and evaluation. And so not only informing the non-communicable disease, but some of the other programs that we may have where we can take, away, take some of the lessons learned from the PBF and bring it across and apply it to some of the other um, uh, conditions or that we're looking at under health. Okay. So uh, not yet in full swing, but fully fledged. Fully planning fledged. to get into the swing of things in July. In July. Just give right. us a status update, a progress report of sorts for this period. Okay, so 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 up to now, so when when when, when I first came, we, we we yes, as as I said, we did have we knew the health so we knew the health centers that we were going to focus on. Those were selected um, at the design phase. So now we had to to work with all of the health centers. We did a quick assessment of the health centers to try and find out what's their capacity, mm -hmm. um, and and I could report that that in sixteen of the seventeen because we're going to be implementing in sixteen uh, facilities during the two and a half years. Okay. But the goal, of course, would be of, to get everybody because when you start to see uh, progress and normally PBF wherever PBF has been implemented, there has been progress. Um, um, so we're going to be implementing. We're going to be starting with the with with eight facilities in the first six months. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be, be bringing on the, the other nine, the other nine from January of, of, of 2022. That will be phase two. That will, that will be phase, that will be phase two. Uh, currently what we are doing, we are developing with the assistance of the, uh, we are hiring some staff. Okay. We're going to be hiring um, some staff to do some supportive supervision with the health centers. You will appreciate it's going to be a, a few, some new uh, procedures. And so... That staff itself, the hiring will be trained by the external consultants, and so um, they will be they will be working with the facilities to ensure for the for the, for throughout the program um, th uh, the implementation of the pilot, and then uh, we also will be hiring some some IT some uh, IT staff as well mm -hmm. to work with the health management information unit. So so my job really is to coordinate. All of those units, these about four or five units within the Ministry of Health, so that by the end of the of the of the of the of the pilot, we would have they would have had built capacity in those units to to allow the bank to 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 to, to phase out, so to speak, and then us to continue. But also, will be uh, at the end of the day, we want to have capacity also to be able to implement the universal health care. Mm -hmm. So just have always in the back at the back of your mind that these are two. Um, four services really is diabetes screening, uh, hypertension screening, diabetes treatment, hypertension treatment. Um, um, but there will be a lot, there will be a few more services uh, to be added on in the package of services. But we would have, have, have gotten lessons learned from the PBF uh, so that by the time we're ready to implement the universal health care, we would be in a much better place than if we're starting from scratch. Wonderful. We are due for our final break. When we come back, we're talking projected outcomes, key mm -hmm. deliverables yes. under this project. Stay with us. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Ki de moun de moun bagay chans? Depi moun fet, pièce moun pa jamais counsel. Moni Glacia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband and we spent over an hour on the cell. Sa se counseling? Just think about the glass. When you're having difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? 
I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. When your situation is bien way, et moins besoin professional counseling, mais mani l'argent, il cherche à condition doctor's visit. Eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call it EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit ASAP. Because I want professional. Did you say free? Free counseling. Boy, Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468-2269. EAP works. Let it work for you. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're talking performance-based financing under the Health System Strengthening Project of St. Lucia. I have in studio uh, for the past uh, two segments, <laughs> we've been speaking uh, to uh, Mr. Nahum Jabatiste, who is the performance-based financing coordinator out of the implementation unit. Uh, we've, we've come across the, the plans, uh, the activities that are scheduled for the next few months in terms of the rollout of this project mm -hmm. and more specifically performance-based financing aspect. Speak to us about the projected outcomes. What are the key deliverables of this project uh, that is hoped to come out, of, 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 out uh, after all is said and done? Okay, so, so first and foremost, I, and I would go start with the impacts. We would want to see first a reduction in mortality. Mm -hmm. Then we would also want to see a reduction also in mobility. So in other words, to prevent as many people as, uh, from getting the disease and prevent those people from dying. In addition to that, there are other, if you want to call it, low-hanging fruit. So, for example, much better quality services. Mm -hmm. Much better quality, quality services. That also would be uh, a significant outcome. Also, the use, the, 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 the using the key data that we have uh, to, to make decisions. So, evidence-based decisions uh, as well. We're also going to, uh, going to have uh, service delivery, a much, much uh, better service delivery, quality service delivery. We're also going to be, be, be um, uh, and ultimately, what we would want to do is to provide lessons as well, so that when we come across to, to implementing universal health care, we also would, would, would have had these outcomes that would help us to, 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 to deliver a much more effective uh, package for, for universal, universal health care. So these are the ones that come to mind, but obviously we are, there are others like, like improving the existing services, mm -hmm. building the capacity of the Ministry of Health, even while, uh, uh, while we, are, we, are, we are doing the, the, chance, the, the chance to uh, um, evaluation evaluation of of, of, of of different programs so it's PBF but but we will during this the implementation of the PBF we also will be building capacity so that the ministry uh, uh, can evaluate its programs on a more ongoing and regular basis so these are some of the key key um, out, outcomes and, and impacts that I think uh, that we have and of course not forgetting all the amputations and all of the things yeah. um, th that's happening in the hospital and, and, and ultimately also reducing the burden of, of diabetes and hypertension now but non-communicable disease on the hospitals you know this these are also uh, these are some of the, the key uh, outcomes that I th see, see I envisage that that that, that we, we would be able to achieve um, uh, from this PBF pilot. The pilot. Okay, let's speak to the the overall goal. We, uh, after the pilot, we know that there are plans to engage the private sector. Speak to us. Give us a glimpse into what that will look like. Right. So universal healthcare. What universal healthcare uh, really really does is is there is the, because right now most of the the, the provision of healthcare in the country is with the government. Yes. The government funds uh, uh, most of it. So universal health care uh, would seek to engage the private sector. But what's going to be, 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 be very crucial is that both the private, the standards, the procedures of the private se uh, uh, of the, the public uh, sector would also be applicable to the private sector. So it doesn't matter if you're a public or private provider you would still have to, for example, go through the contracts. You would still need to generate the data that you need. And so um, automatically, you would have an improvement 
uh, in the delivery of service in the public sector as well as in the private sector. And you'd have a much more standardized delivery of, of, of services with universal health care. You know, and, and of course, you, you and always on the, in the underpin with that in health will always be the quality of services. So continuous quality improvement uh, as well. So, so you're looking at two things. You're looking at the performance. First of all, you have to reach people, but you're also looking at quality. You know, you, you cannot just reach everybody. The quality of services that you, that you, and then how you do things. So apart from the outcome, you have to look at the, the efficiency as well as the effectiveness. So it, it's going to be very, it's, 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 it's not very easy. It's not very easy. You have a, we have a lot of reform to do. But at the end of the day, um, we will be in a much better place in terms of health in the country. And one important out, um, outcome that I, I, I didn't mention uh, in the PBF is that uh, we will, for example, in, in the PBF, we'll be providing um, um, free tests. So for those persons found with diabetes and hypertension, they will get free tests. One of the objectives of universal health care is to, is to prevent out-of-pocket spending. And so uh, that's why I think that this PBF is, is like a mini universal health care. Everything, almost everything that is to be offered under universal health care, we can see that happening in the, in the PBF over the next uh, couple of months. For diabetes so and hypertension. For diabetes and hypertension. Yes, you got it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So um, just you have your work cut out for you for the next few months. Tell us about the team that you have behind you uh, right. in the rollout of this project. Yes. So, so, so uh, the, the, my, my, my team, it's because I, I'm a, my, my office really coordinates everything. So the team is the team of the Ministry of Health. But I can mention the key departments. Okay. So the first key department, uh, it wouldn't happen if we do not have the primary care uh, the primary care services, and that's the community nursing service. They manage the primary care services. So all of the nurses in the health centers, I want to, as they say, big them up. <laughs> because if um, without them, it wouldn't happen. So this would be one of the key. The other one is the health management information unit, and that's the people working the data for the primary care. They are key because the basis, all of this, the data will be automated. So we have to be building modules, uh, so that it can capture the data that we need. And so we have been working with them over the last eight or nine months, understanding the system and then making recommendations and then uh, uh, usurping or absorbed, I don't know what's the word, remember the word, but, but, but you know, it was affecting their work, their day-to-day -day work, and they have been very, very, very helpful. I want to mention the planning unit of the Ministry of Health for conceptualizing um, this and for giving it priority and for, for so that we now uh, can do that. There is um, a focal, there is the, the office of the chief medical officer. Uh, there is a, f a focal point for non-communicable diseases in there as well, who has been very, very key because diabetes and hypertension is her focus. And, and so she has been very, very instrumental um, in, in, in us moving forward and of course, the epidemiology unit of the of the Ministry of Health, and uh, one other thing that has happened, I, I, I kind of uh, there we have formed an executive team within the Ministry of Health between these key departments and the project implementation unit that we are already starting to to have oversight over this. So I'm not alone mm -hmm. in this. Uh, we have been brainstorming, you know, working with the bank and the external consultants. Uh, to ensure that we, we could deliver a, a package of services for diabetes and hypertension that is, that is cost effective, but also um, um, very, very of a, of a high quality and could have high impact um, in, the, in the relatively short time that we have to implement. Wonderful. I'd like to thank you so much for your time, Mr. Nehem Jabatiste, mm -hmm. speaking to us on the performance-based financing aspect of the St. Lucia Health System Strengthening Project. Like, say, like I said, mm -hmm. a mouthful, but definitely <laughs> something that is welcomed by the people of St. Lucia. Thank you. You thank agree? You. Thank you. I agree. I totally, totally agree. And thank you. And it's been my pleasure. Wonderful. Yeah. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. This has been another installment of Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Do enjoy the rest of it. Cheers. Stay tuned to NTN for more programming. Goodbye.